This morning, I was taking a shit in a public restroom when someone walked inside. Uh, uh, Occupados! America, we locked the doors. I couldn't tell you why I forgot to lock the door, but even more than that, I can't tell you why the first thing out of my mouth was the Spanish word for occupied. I don't even speak Spanish. So I sat there, praying that this man would not be there when I walked out, so I would be spared the moment that was sure to occur when he realized I was not Hispanic. I couldn't even finish shitting I was so crippled with fear. I was going to have to donate plasma with a very cramped stomach. We're rattling my cane. As I stepped out of my car and began making my way toward the parking lot to the donation center, a man in a t-shirt with cut off sleeves stepped toward me and yelled, Hey, motherfucker, did you say something to me? No? Yeah, that's what I thought. He obviously still thought I had said something and that I was too scared to admit it. And honestly, if I had said something, I probably would have done the same thing. But the point is that I didn't. Shouldn't that count for something? I wish I could kick that guy's ass. I sat in the waiting room at the plasma place for a little bit before being called back into the room where they do the physicals. This confused me at first because I wasn't due for another physical for a couple months. Turns out the last time I donated, my speed was abnormal. I had no idea what this meant at first, but since it had to do with my blood, I was a little alarmed. I'm not sexually active. I've, I've never even had sex. Well, and I don't do drugs. I, I work in an after school program. When the kids get hurt, I just run away and throw band-aids at them. And so if anything's wrong with me, it would have had to have been from the needles here. Alright, so. right, let's just, just calm down. It's probably because you didn't get enough protein the last time you donated. Probably, as in it may not be. Well, right, probably because you don't use unsterilized needles. You're not sexually active, so that, you know, it has to be the case. Okay, so... What do I do now? Just, you know, go home, you know, work on eating some more protein, eat, keep a well-balanced diet, and then come back and your level should be fine. We can start donating again. Okay. So I left, and most likely he went back to the staff room to tell all of his co-workers about the paranoid virgin straight-edge kid who provides improper care to children. I got a couple hot dogs for lunch. The place I went to didn't put the hot dogs in a bag, which I only mentioned because as I was reaching for them when I got home, my keys slid across the top of one of them, getting ketchup on them. Not wanting it to go to waste, I licked the ketchup off. Just as I did this, I noticed one of my neighbors was looking directly at me. So that's great. Now he thinks he lives in the same building as a deviant who likes to sit in his car and lick his keys. Speaking of devious activity, if you're a regular reader of this blog, it should not surprise you to find out that I spent the free time before work that, being deferred from plasma, afforded me by looking at hardcore pornography. Today, I actually found a video that I'd never seen before with my favorite porn star, Brandy Winters. I was excited until the clip took a strange turn. Uh, and who are you going to be having sex with? Uh, my daddy. Mmm. Is he your real father? No, he's not my real dad. Um, but it's like this fetish thing, I don't know, I think it's really hot. Mm -hmm. Anything else you'd like to share? Um, I like to be on top. Anything else? No, that's all you need to know. Okay. A little kiss for the audience. Now lick your lips. Good. Bye. I'm lost and I can't find my daddy. <sighs> There's my baby girl. Your mommy went to yoga class, so it's time for you to come over here and show me what that mouth can do. I don't mean to sound judgmental. I like a lot of weird porn. I found a video once of a girl getting fucked by a Muppet. And that's like my go-to mental image if nothing else is doing it for me. But this seemed to cross a line. Maybe it was because I was about to go to my job where I take care of a bunch of kids. At any rate, I turned the volume all the way down so I couldn't hear her saying, Daddy, and fast forwarded until she was out of the schoolgirl outfit. I did my business, and I watched TV until it was time for work. Work was actually pretty cool today. Natalie was the only one there for most of the afternoon. Everyone else got picked up early, so I just sat there while she played with Legos. At one point, she walked towards me, though. I didn't do much after work. I just kind of sat around and watched TV. I saw the new commercial for Peraldo Family Carpets. This Tuesday only, get 88 cent square foot on any green carpet. You can catch me carpets, but you'll never catch me lucky charms. You won't need marshmallows when you got deals this good. That's only here at Peraldo Family Carpets in Portsmouth, Ohio. See you soon. 
It was pretty awesome. I ordered a pizza for dinner. I had a class with the guy who delivered the pizza the semester before I dropped out of college. It was a stage combat class, and we were partners one day. We had to pretend to punch and kick each other a bunch of different ways. It was one of those awkward situations where I wasn't sure if he remembered me. Maybe he wasn't sure if I remembered him. So we just never acknowledged it. I gave him the money, and he gave me the food. We never said anything about the day we pretended to beat the shit out of each other. It was weird. I ate the whole pizza by myself, and I wonder why I don't have a girlfriend. Seriously, I'm nice, I work with kids, I'm honest, I certainly never hide anything. It has to be the pizza. I'll start eating better soon, and I'll start working out. I'm sure that going on a diet and going to the gym will give me plenty of material to write about in here. This is all I have for today, though. See you all tomorrow night. Today was a bad day. A phone call from my boss woke me up at 10 a.m. Hello? Josh, I need you to come to the office as soon as possible. What? Are you busy? Um, no, I just woke up. Well, I'm sorry I woke you up, but I need you to get down here as soon as you can. Is everything all right? Not really. Is there a problem? Okay, I'll see you soon. From the sound of her voice, it was nothing good. I quickly got dressed and hurried out to my car. Hey, hey I'm, I'm sorry to bother you, but you wouldn't happen to have any jumper cables, would you? Uh, I don't think so. You don't think so, but you're not sure? I'm pretty sure I don't. Could you check? Um, I'm really in a bit of a pickle here. I'm late for work and I left my lights on accidentally all night. So, my car won't start. Why couldn't I have just said no? Why do I always have to be so insecure? Oh, great, you, you've got some. Yeah, so, um, what, do I need to pull my car around to yours, or what? Hell if I know, I've never done this before. Neither have I. So then, why do you have cables? My dad gave them to me for emergencies. I've seen him do it once. Oh, so it, it's got to be easy once you've seen it done before. I, I got to get to work, please. I'm sure you can do it. Your car won't start because you left your lights on last night? It's what I figured anyway. It's what makes people's batteries die, isn't it? I don't think this looks right. You don't think it does? Yeah. I don't think I should do this. Please, I have to get to work. So do I. Well then just do it and we can both get to work! Hey, whoa, whoa. You boys, you boys aren't planning on jumpstarting this car, are you? Yeah, why? That battery's cracked. If you try to jumpstart it, it'll just explode. You gotta get yourself a new battery. Well, I guess it's a good thing I work in an auto parts store. Oh yeah, one more thing. You boys aren't wearing green. Ow! Happy St. Patrick's Day. Hey. Is this your blog? Yeah? Well, Natalie's mother called me this morning to complain about the part that you say that her daughter told you that she farts all the time. A million thoughts began to race through my mind, but the first one I was able to vocalize was, how'd she even find my blog? It doesn't matter, Josh. It's confidential, all right? It's exactly the same reason that you cannot write about children in a public forum like this. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, too. You know this means I have to fire you? What? You write about porn in the paragraph before! Yeah, but that was mainly writing about how I don't agree with that type of porn. But you watched it anyway. And then after that, you write about how every time a kid gets a cut, you just throw a band-aid on it. That was a joke! Well, Natalie's mother does not feel comfortable with you watching her child anymore. So, can you transfer me to another program at a different school? I haven't done anything wrong before this. 
You can't just fire me without warning, can you? For this I can. We sat there awkwardly for a moment before I apologized one last time and left the room. And that's the story of how I was fired by a leprechaun. I went home and after stewing for a bit, and jerking off, I began to calculate how much my sudden lack of income was going to set me back. I found that if I don't spend any more money for the rest of this month, I will be just $5 short of paying my rent. That would only leave my cable, electric, and water bills to worry about, provided that I somehow subdue the need to eat and drive my car. I then decided that it would be a good idea to get that speed test. I needed protein though, so I got a smoothie. On my way out from that, I ran into a really weird guy. Good for you. Not according to this bullshit holiday. Uh, I just forgot. I, I was in a hurry this morning. We all are these days, aren't we? I guess so. Alright, here's your drink. Just don't tell anyone. When I got to the plasma place, I found a note on the door saying that it was closed due to management issues. Perplexed, I called the phone number and received a voice recording that recited the same exact message that was printed on the piece of paper. I went home and tried to find more information online. There was a story in the local newspaper that didn't really have any other information than what I already knew. So I sat in my room, panicked and worried, and tried to think. Which is again to say, I masturbated. It's not like I had big plans for the rest of the day, so I began searching for a new job. Eventually I got hungry, but I didn't want to get anything too expensive for dinner. There was a can of SpaghettiOs that had been in my cabinet since close to the time I moved into my apartment. I like SpaghettiOs, when they're hot, but until they're heated, I hate how gross and squishy they are, so I've never made them. But tonight, in this time of dire financial stress, I've decided to face my fear. I wasn't about to do two things I feel uncomfortable with by using the stove, though. So I put them in the microwave. Apparently, you're not supposed to do that with metal pots. The fire wasn't that bad. It could have been a lot worse. I don't even know if the guy that 911 sent over was a real fireman. He wasn't dressed like it. Still, I know this is so stupid, but I asked him. I know this is probably a pretty ridiculous question, but you guys wouldn't happen to be hiring, would you, for any position? You, you know, I'm, I'm not sure, but no offense. We're probably not going to hire the kinds of people that put metal pots in the microwaves. So, I didn't quite have the luck of the Irish this St. Patrick's Day. Maybe tomorrow will be better. Pretty much has to, right? First off, today, I just want to say something that I don't say enough, and that is how much I appreciate all of your comments. This morning, I read a very interesting comment on yesterday's entry. Hey Josh, my name's Claire. I'm Natalie's sister. I'm so sorry you lost your job. I'm even more sorry because it's totally my fault. I thought it was funny when you wrote about Natalie telling you she farts all the time, so I showed my mom and she completely freaked out. I know this probably doesn't make you feel any better, but if it helps to put the blame on somebody, you can blame me. I'm so sorry. If there's anything I can do, just let me know. Reading that comment did make me feel better, if only because I had no idea Claire was reading my blog before that. I had spoken to her a few times before when she picked Natalie up, but I didn't figure she thought much of it. I responded. Hey Claire, thanks for being concerned and for reading, but I understand you didn't mean to do anything wrong just like I didn't mean any harm when I wrote about it. I don't really think there's anything you can do unless you can get me a job, but it's nice to know that people are thinking about me. I debated for a while whether or not I should say more, or if that was already too much. Then I finally posted it. I decided to take a walk since it was nice out. That was fun until I ran across an intersection and some asshole in a car yelled, Run, Forrest, run! I fucking hate that. I'm trying to help cars by getting off the road as quickly as possible. Do I get thanked for that? No, I get mocked. Hello? Hi, I'm trying to reach Josh Thompson. This is Josh. 
Hello, Josh. I'm calling in re response to the application you placed online for Camacho Teen Support Services. Okay. I'd like to set up an appointment for a job interview if you're still interested in working with us. Yeah, definitely. When's a good time for you? Um, I'm free any time. Are you busy today? No, not at all. Could you meet us in about an hour? Sure. Alright, see you then. See you then. So I went home to get ready and I put on my favorite shirt. Then I checked my email one more time before I left to find that Claire had already replied. I actually seriously might be able to get you a job at my dad's restaurant. He's looking for delivery people, so I'm not sure how comfortable you are with that. But it might give you some funny stuff to write about. Let me know if you're interested. I responded. I'm willing to do just about anything at the moment. Do I need to fill out an application or anything? Let me know. Camacho Rehab is the place where my friend Abigail used to work. Abigail, if you're a long-time reader, you'll know is my ex, uh girl I liked a lot, who got very upset when I would not stop blogging about my feelings for her. That was a couple of years ago though, so I figured she'd be off to bigger and better things by now. Unfortunately, as I found out, her bigger and better things were still at Camacho. This isn't against some restraining order, is it? <laughs> it's been a long time. Yeah, a couple of years now. I, I didn't think you'd still be working here. Well, I'm a director now. I graduate soon though, I'll be leaving in a couple of months. Cool. Yeah, I'll be moving to Columbus. Cool. Now you want to work here? Finally get sick of the writing center? I actually left that job a couple years ago. I, right after we stopped talking, actually, I think. I've been working with kids in an after-school program. Really? Yeah, so that's been interesting. Sure, it has been. It says here that you left that job involuntarily. Uh, I got fired for blogging about it. A kid told me she fired her all the time, and I wrote about it. Yeah, that's a breach of confidentiality. You'll have to deal with that here, too. Okay, I, I just won't write patients' names. No, Josh. What happens here stays here. Um, okay, but... See, it's not like I'm writing anything bad about the center. I'm just... Or not even anything bad about the people. Just... You're telling me I can't even write if someone farts or says something funny? Not really. That's stupid. Okay, well, if it's stupid, then you can find a job somewhere else. Oh, all right. I, I won't blog about going to work. Though I won't have very much to write about, considering I'll be there most of the time. It's fine. I'll, I'll work something out. Maybe I should reschedule you an interview with someone else. I mean, this is kind of a conflict of interest. No, I, I mean, they don't know you know me, right? Not unless they read your blog tonight, I'm assuming. Okay. I'll just try to treat you like anyone else. What are some of your strengths and weaknesses? Well, as you know, I'm honest and reliable and very committed. And weaknesses? Well, I know you, so I don't want to say any bullshit interview answers like, sometimes I work too hard, but... Wait, you'd admit that you're a little obsessive, right? What do you mean? What would you do if you could blog about this tonight? Why wouldn't I be able to blog about this tonight? I don't know, something comes up. I don't think anything could come up that would keep me from updating my blog tonight. You should know that better than anybody. Exactly. And you can't keep secrets. How is that a bad thing? That's a good thing. Not when your job requires you to be confidential. When, when did you say you were moving to Columbus again? I graduated in May, but I probably won't be leaving until August. Well, if I still need a job in August, I'll come back. It kind of felt good to have a conversation with someone I was familiar enough with to be that dramatic. When I got out, I saw that I had a new voicemail. Hey Josh, it's Claire. Found your number on Facebook. Hope that's not too creepy. Anyway, um, do you want to interview with my dad tomorrow at 10 at the restaurant? Let me know if you can. Thanks, bye. Hello? Uh, hi. Claire? Josh? Hey, what's up? Um, nothing. Hi. How are you? Uh, I'm fine. That's great. What are you doing right now? Um, I just got out of a job interview. Oh, so you don't need a job anymore? No, no, I, I definitely do. And I can do 10 tomorrow morning. Oh, great. Have, have you had lunch yet? Uh, no, I'll, I'll probably just get something here in a bit. Well, if you want, I could get you something. You know make up for um, getting you fired? Sure, okay. 
Where are you? I'm in the student center cafeteria. Is that all right? Yeah, that's fine. I'll, I'll see you in a few minutes. Okay, see ya. And so, I went to meet a girl I hardly knew, who, as it turns out, knew a lot of information about me. She bought me a pizza, so that was cool. I told her about my job interview, and to my surprise, she had actually read through my blog entries enough to know who Abigail was. Anyway, she said she didn't think I'd be able to work there because she didn't think I'd be able to be confidential because of my blog. Well, I don't think it matters if you're confidential when you're delivering sandwiches, so... You can feel free to write about working for my dad all you want. That's a good thing. So, how'd you find my blog? Well, do you remember that day that I was picking up Natalie and you were wearing a Modest Mouse t-shirt? Yeah. Well, after that day, I thought you were pretty cool, so I looked you up. I hope it doesn't make you feel bad, but I'm not like a huge Modest Mouse fan or anything. I just got the shirt a good one. <laughs> I usually don't even wear shirts that say things on them because... because... you don't like it when people talk to you about them? Um, yeah, how'd you know? Well, that's what you wrote in your blog entry that day. I, I, I'm, I'm sorry, it's nothing against you, I just... I know, I understand. So, is your I'm, mom still... I'm uh, sorry, you go first. I was just gonna ask if your mom's still pissed at me for writing about your sister farting all the time. I don't know, she's really weird. I can't believe she's got mad about that. It's not going to get weird if she knows I'm working for your dad, is it? They're separated. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry. No, it's okay. So, um, what were you going to say before? Oh, I was just going to ask if I was the first person you don't know read your blog this much. Yeah, I, I think you're the first person I've met that's read my blog this much, including the people I know. I mean... Then again, I don't know that many people anymore, so... Do, do you have a blog or anything? No. Well, yeah. <laughs> I just don't update it too much. I'm more of a Twitter person. Which reminds me, I need to tweet about this. I, I can't do Twitter. 140 characters is not enough to... Well, you've read my whole rant on that, right? Yeah. You really know, like, everything about me. I know nothing about you. I knew exactly what I wanted to know, but I couldn't ask it. At least I seem extremely shallow. But then, she did enjoy my blog, right? She was a huge fan of my daily thoughts on my boring, stupid life. Maybe it wouldn't be the worst thing in the world if I asked- Is there someone who dates you? Is there someone who dates me? Uh, I mean, do you have a- No, no. Well, See, this is why I prefer writing to talk. Well, there's this guy that I've been seeing. We're not Facebook official or anything. Oh, okay. You'd probably get really mad if you heard me say that then. Gotcha. So, um, so what are you majoring in school? Sign language education. Which reminds me, I gotta go to class. Well, that's cool. No, it, it's really stupid. I'm a dumb computers class. But actually, today should be pretty cool. We're doing PowerPoint presentations, and judging by some of the people in my class, they're going to be really weird. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Actually, if you're not doing anything right now, you should come. Am I allowed? Well, there's this woman who brings her kid every week, so you should be fine. Yeah. You can just tell them I'm your 21 year old son. Yeah. I sat there feeling awkward as the other students checked their Facebook pages and other websites. Now who's this here? Oh, this is my friend Josh. Uh, I, I can leave if I need to. No, no, it's okay. As long as you cough up the $50 audit fee. Uh, I can just go. No, man. Jeez, I'm just kidding. I really need to teach your boyfriend here how to take a joke. <laughs> Fucking douchebag. Anyway, Claire was right. The PowerPoints were pretty hilarious and cheesy. A lot of countries like China face problems with overpopulation, but I think that if people had dogs instead of babies, we wouldn't have this problem. Unfortunately, we'll probably never see this perfect world because many people are scared of dogs. 
and many more people are allergic. That's what I think scientists should come up with a way to cure allergies and make people not afraid of dogs anymore. Another guy gave a very passionate presentation about local television meteorologist Marina Jerica. In addition to reporting the weather, Marina also sings opera. God, her talents are infinite. I have a major in journalism, so this has allowed me to get an internship at WSAZ. This has given me a lot of personal time with Marina, and her favorite candy is chocolate Skittles. Who else in the world do you know that likes chocolate Skittles? Nobody. Nobody. Perhaps the most informative presentation came from the president of Marshall's LGBT. Uh, one of the problems that we actually have to deal with a lot in the office is uh, transgender students not knowing uh, what bathrooms they should use. You wouldn't really think of that problem, but it can make a lot of people feel really awkward and uncomfortable. So what we do in the office is we have maps of all these single occupancy bathrooms on campus that transgender students can come in and pick up and use. I've always wanted a map like that so I can know where to go to shit comfortably in public. I know where I'm going sometime soon. So that was the most informative presentation. But my favorite presentation had to be the last one, which taught us all about the countless valuable contributions that truckers make to tank our truck. lives. If you notice the tank truck is long and cylinder-like, that's real nice. The world without trucks, a horrible world, awaits you when the truck driver's job is gone. A world where nothing is ever, ever delivered. Nothing you want will ever get to you. Those fancy shoes, teacher, gone. The sad thing is, his apocalyptic vision of a world without trucks does make sense. What did not make sense was the transition that made sitting through the whole class worth it. <laughs> I don't even know how to do that on PowerPoint, and I'll bet that he wouldn't be able to tell you how to do it again either. Claire and I talked about our favorite parts as I walked her to her car. So, uh, have you already given your presentation? No, I do mine next week. What's it on? It's actually on blogging. I was wondering maybe I could interview you for it. Sounds fun. Cool. So, what do you want to do now? Uh, I don't know. I should probably look for more jobs. Okay. Can't wait to read about that one later. Yeah, well. You know what we should do that reading your blog entry last night made me think of? Lighting a kitchen on fire? No. <laughs> Good answer, though. We should go to Peralta Family Carpets. Isn't that pretty far away, though? It's only 45 minutes. I guess so. Despite living in the tri-state area for the past three years, I've never really explored much beyond my little town. I mean, I've been outside of West Virginia on school trips and family vacations. But this afternoon, Claire and I took a little road trip. It was nice. Out on the highway, think about all the words that you have to say, and I wish that I would have thought this far ahead, then I would have never wanted to be better all day. Can you believe you've never been to Portsmouth or Arlington or Ashland? I don't really like driving much if I don't have to. I, just, I guess I just never put it together in all your vlogs that you've never really left town. I'd get so bored. I don't really get bored. I'm always thinking. Wish I could be like that. Before we got to the carpet store, we stopped to use the bathroom. Didn't want to have our experience hampered by cramps or having to piss. Unfortunately for me, the door was locked. Right? It's still waiting. Is there somebody in there? Well, it's locked. How can it be locked? There's no doorknob. Yeah, but there's a lock. See? Well, don't you need a key? Why would you need a key for the men's room but not the women's? Hmm. Oh, well, why don't you just use the women's? I'll stand here and keep guard. I really didn't want to do it, but I didn't seem to have much of an option. Oh. Sometimes, very rarely, but sometimes, if I'm too nervous to use the bathroom, I can still get myself to do it if I just focus really hard on something completely random. You can do it, Josh. I believe in you. Just try really hard and you can go to the bathroom. Then come see my friends and shop for some carpets. I don't know how, but it works. 
I guess that's all that matters. Eventually, we made it to the store, only to find we were a little too late. Oh, that sucks. It's okay. I just thought we were going to have this really great funny adventure that you could write about in your blog or something. I don't really tend to have great funny adventures. Actually, the door being locked is probably more thematically appropriate for my blog. I'm I'm still going to write the about the computers class and the bathroom thing and just meeting you and hanging out with you and because that's been fun. Yeah, definitely. Oh my god, look! It was Jeannie Peraldo and two of the cats. Gosh, like and pretty, and if you want, I'll even let you pet my kitties and please take plenty of pictures of me. So. I want to be in your blog entry tonight? Of course. I've spent almost the whole day with you. I'm excited to be in your blog. I'm, a, I'm excited to write about you in my blog. She dropped me off at my apartment so that I could begin. After doing all the stalkery stuff that I didn't feel so bad about since she had already done it with me, I began writing this entry, which I hope that you all, especially Claire, enjoy. Tomorrow morning I have my job interview. Wish me luck. I was a little early to Ed's pizza and sandwich shop this morning. The door was locked, so I was a little antsy. After about 10 minutes of waiting though, Claire's dad, uh, Ed, came strolling up. Hey, you must be the famous Josh Thompson. Yep. Come on in. So, Claire seems to really enjoy your blog. Yeah, I know, I mean, I normally don't read my blog entries after I write them, but I actually think she knows me better than I do. Yeah, I was reading a bit after Claire asked about you getting a job here. Oh, yeah? Yeah. You know, I met Brandy Winters once. Seriously? Yeah. She was doing a show up at a titty bar in Pittsburgh about two years ago. Yeah. Wanted to get a Polaroid, but she was charging $150 for one. Wow. It's 200 for a lap dance, right? Yeah. Plus with the club charges. You know, I'm sure it would have been worth it, but... Got nervous, got a DVD signed instead. It's still pretty awesome that you got to see her live. Yeah. Hey, Jason, what's up? Not much. Yeah, that's Jason. He'll be training the other day. Okay. Wait, training? Yeah, delivery's pretty straightforward, but, you know, whenever you're not on the road, we'll have you in here making stuff. Wait, I got the job? Yeah, like I said, Claire gave me the link to your blog, and I read through a bit of it. You know, there's your character reference. You know, if you'd like, we can dick around here all day. You tell me what makes you a great team player. But I got enough bullshit from my ex-wife, you know what I'm saying. Um... Yeah. Thanks. Yeah, just do a good job. Try not to make me look too bad whenever you write about this. I assume you will be writing about it. Uh, yeah, probably. Um, why don't you go on back and Jason will start telling you what to do. That went a lot better than I expected it to. And I didn't even expect it to go badly. It went so well, in fact, that I was caught completely off guard when I met Jason. Hey, I'm the guy Claire said would be upset if she told you she didn't have a boyfriend. We stood there awkwardly in silence for what was probably only 10 seconds, but it seemed like 10 minutes. Um, sorry? Please don't take her away from me. I don't even know her very well. I mean... Yeah, well, she knows you, and she likes you, and you're getting to know her now, and you like her. I never said that I liked her. It's fucking obvious! You're just happy because you finally met someone who likes you as much as you like yourself. I don't like myself. I'm sorry. I, I should have said that. This is my fault. I'm the one who said we shouldn't be listed as being in a relationship on Facebook because that just feeds into this new society where everyone has to know everything about everybody. It's stupid bullshit. I was feeling pretty uncomfortable until I saw that Jason had been cutting onions before I walked in. I just saw the onions. I, I thought you were really crying. I am really crying. You think cutting onions makes me cry? I've been cutting onions for eight years. And in five months, I would have had enough to buy the ring. Hey, everything okay in here? Yeah, everything's fine. Josh just had a few questions about delivery, and I'm getting ready to show him how to prepare food. Okay. From that point on, Jason didn't mention Claire. 
He just mechanically went through all of the preparation techniques. After a couple hours, it was time for my first delivery. By some sort of strange coincidence, it was to the LGBTO president from the computers class yesterday. Are you Josh Thompson? Um, yeah? You were in my computers class yesterday when I was giving the presentation. You, you wrote your blog about it. Yeah? Yeah, I have a Google alert for Marshall LGBTO. So. Oh. So was that supposed to be funny? What? Like, you know, the whole thing about uh, wanting a map of the single occupancy bathroom so you can take a shit comfortably. I don't know. I mean, it's the truth. I, I don't feel comfortable shitting in public. Yeah, I mean, that, that's fine if it is. I just... Do you think that transgendered people would think it was that funny? I don't really think much about my blog entries after I just write them. So. Well, that's cool. Yeah. I didn't figure you were trying to be mean. I was just, just asking. Is there anything I can do? Well, you can give me a sandwich. Oh, well, of course. <laughs> my next delivery was to a lady down by the river. Are you Melinda Archer? Yes. I have your sandwich for you. It's five seventy-five. Thank you so much. I've called three different places and none of them will deliver to me here on the river. Well, that's why we're better than other sandwich places. Do you need change? No, you keep it. Thank you. Did, did you just order that sandwich to throw to the ducks? Is there anything wrong with that? Well, no, it's just I worked hard making it. Why did you make it? You asked me to. For someone to eat it? Yeah. What's the wrong if the ducks eat it or if I eat it? No difference, I guess. That's the last time I order from there. Wait, I'm, I'm sorry. I, I, I didn't mean to offend you. Give me your shirt. What? If you ever want me to order a sandwich from your restaurant and again, give me your shirt. a couple of sandwiches in the shop before we got our next delivery order from someone with whom I was very familiar, my old boss. I didn't know quite what to expect when I walked into her office. Would she be mad at me? Or would she make fun of me? Oh, so you got the job? Um, yeah. Did Claire read your entry from last night yet? Uh, I'm not sure. I haven't talked to her yet. Well, that'll be interesting. Yeah, and the, the guy she's talking to is at the restaurant I work at. He seemed a little upset. Oh, I'll bet. I suddenly felt another kind of awkward, as if I was a soap opera character who had stepped out of the television set and into a viewer's living room. The kids really miss you, you know. Really? Yeah. You should come by sometime. If you have to write about it, you can always put your entry in private. I don't know about that. Maybe. I hadn't thought a whole lot about how Claire would react to the entry after getting Jason's reaction. Obviously, I thought a lot about what she would think last night, but now knowing him and knowing a little bit more about their relationship, I started to worry. Would she be upset? Was I going to complicate things? I didn't have much time to worry before it was time for the next delivery. I recognized the guy I was delivering to as one of the technicians from the plasma donation place, so I asked him what happened to it. Yeah, some bureaucratic issues. Because, you see, the day before, I, I went, I was deferred from donating because my SPE was abnormal or something. Yeah, you know, I, I think I hear my phone ringing. What? Yeah, I'm going to have to get that. I didn't hear anything. Are you calling me a liar? No. As I made another sandwich, I thought about whether or not I had a blood disease. How to find out? Should I find out? If I was freaking out over nothing, what would I do if I did? What was Claire going to say the next time I talked to her? What, what would Jason say after that? What about her dad or, or my old boss the next time I delivered to her? Who all knows about everything going on in my life anyway? What exactly does it say about me that even though these thoughts frightened me, I was still excited and glad because I was going to have plenty of material to write about tonight? My last delivery was the oddest, which is saying something, all things considered. 
The guy invited me inside to do an interview for his video blog. I told him I had to get back to the restaurant, and he told me it would only take a minute. I told him I really would if I could, but... Well, he told me he was going to call and complain about me if I didn't. So, I went in and sat in front of his computer. So I'm sitting here today with Josh... Thompson. Josh Thompson, local pizza and sandwich delivery guy for Ed's local sandwich and pizza place. Huh? So how does that make you feel? How does what make me feel? How does being a pathetic delivery boy make you feel? Uh, it's cool, I guess. Today's just my first day. But I'm willing to guess that you would not be a sandwich delivery boy if you didn't have to, right? Um, I don't know. It, it's not that bad. Okay, what would you do if you, if money was not an option? What would you do? I don't know. I mean, eventually I'd like to write professionally for a living. Okay. If that's what you mean. I just mean I okay, so what do you want to write? Um, well, I like writing my blog. It'd be pretty cool to get paid to do that. Okay, another blogger, eh? What do you blog about? My life. Things that happen to me, okay. things that annoy me, probably this. Okay, so what would you blog about if money was not an option? Well, I don't really expect that to happen anytime soon, so I haven't really thought about it. <sighs> okay, well, I'm asking you to fucking think about it, Josh. Just get that through your face and answer the question. No, I, I need to get back to work. Oh, well, get, get back to work distracting yourself, right? Distracting yourself from your pathetic existence where if you died tomorrow, no one would ever know or give a fuck? No. What are you even talk? What is this thing about exactly? Josh, I'm trying to expose the truth here on my vlog. I'm trying to expose the truth because I'm tired of people surrendering their dreams to corporate fat cats who just want to use them like a piece of machinery to fulfill their own greedy, selfish desires. I'm not surrendering my dreams. That's some bullshit. I'm, Just leave, I'm living Josh. my dream. I'm, I'm happy, okay? You're ruining my show. Get off my set. Your show was ruined when you started speaking. You were boring anyway, right? Okay. Well, um... That concludes this episode. Next episode is going to be brought to you by... Gary's Sandwich Shop and Delivery. I told the man who I believed to be named Ed the story. He said he figured I'd had enough for my first day. He told me to be there again same time tomorrow. I walked out as Jason glared at me from behind the kitchen. Before I even had a chance to start worrying again, Claire called. Hello? How was work? Um, it was alright. He didn't tell me the guy you were talking to. Oh, really? Was that weird? Yeah, it was pretty weird. I mean, the guy really likes you. I know, I'm sorry. Hey, um, are you hungry? Yeah. Wanna go to Jewel City Seafood? My treat. Sure. Right now? There was a cherry Coke waiting for me when I got to the restaurant. Claire ordered it for me. I wanna go ahead and get the white fish sandwich, but I didn't know if you wanted something different today, so I thought I'd wait. No, that, that, that sounds good. So, did you make any interesting deliveries today? I told her about the video blogger and my old boss. She seemed amused. Sounds like you have a lot to write about tonight. Yeah. Speaking of which, um, what do you think about last night's entry here? I like this. Thanks for writing all those nice things about me. It's, uh, no problem. I just wrote what I thought. I don't think Jason liked it very much, though. Yeah, I know. Have you talked to him about it yet? No. Um, he's been at work all day. Well, if, if you could talk to him before I go to work tomorrow, I'd really appreciate it. I'll try. Jason's a really nice guy and everything, and I like spending time with him, but I like hanging out with you a whole lot more. She don't even know me. Well, I read all about you, know? Yeah, but that's not the same as getting to know someone face to face. Well, what do you think I'm doing right now? Uh huh. What do you like about me anyway? What's so great about my blog? Everything in the world, like, you, know, you don't fit in with anything. 
I said awkwardly as she had an unpleasant discussion with a loud female caller that resulted in her agreeing to do something she did not want to do. Mom has a date tonight. I have to watch Natalie. Uh, I'm sorry. You should come over and hang out for a little while. At your mom's house? Yeah. Natalie really misses you. Your mom got me banned from hanging out with her. Up to you. I mean, if you'd rather just lie on the couch and watch TV all night, I'll talk about that. All right, I'll, I'll hang out for a little while. So we went to pick Natalie up for my old job. The first thing she did when she saw me was explode me with something she made out of Legos. Natalie, I told you to stop making guns. This isn't a gun, it's Hillary's doomsday device. How do you know who Hitler is? Hitler was the world's greatest supervillain. You couldn't really argue with her. It was a fun evening. We played some video games. Natalie told us some weird stories. I've always thought she was an interesting kid. And tonight I found out where she gets it from. The way she interacts with Claire. It was fun to watch. And it made me wish I had a sibling when, as I was growing up. I was a little jealous of both of them. At one point, Claire got a call and had to leave the room, leaving Natalie and me by ourselves to watch TV. Are you gonna be Claire's new boyfriend? I don't know. She's already got one. And we're just kind of getting to know each other. Well, I hope you don't tell everyone our secrets. What secrets? I don't know. Whatever secret she tells you, if she has any. I hope you don't tell everyone the way you told my mom that I fart all the time. Uh, I'm sorry. I thought that was a joke. I mean, you don't really fart all the time. Yes, I do. Just because you can't smell or hear it doesn't mean I am not farting all the time. Did you fart just now? All the time. Jason just broke up with me. Uh, what? <coughs> is, is, he, is he gonna be at work tomorrow? I don't know. Couldn't get him word in once he started going. Are you okay? I'm just really confused right now. Can, can I do anything? You like me, don't you? What do you like about me? Well, you've been really friendly to me, and I really like the way you hang out with your sister. And you're really, really pretty. I, I don't know, I, I, I still don't really know you yet. I tried to think of something to do, but before I could think of anything, her mom walked in. What are you doing here? Mom! Oh. Get away from my daughter! Oh, I Okay, I, I wasn't... You weren't supposed to be home till 11. Get out of my house. I'm, I'm really, really sorry. Uh, if you're not out of here in the next 10 seconds, I'm going to call the cops. I walked home. It was about 45 minutes from Claire's house to my apartment. As I was walking, I began trying to write this blog entry in my head. But all I could think about was what an idiot I was for A, going to Claire's mom's house in the first place, and B, hesitating when a girl finally likes me. So what if I haven't known her for very long? I like being around her, and she likes being around me. That should be enough, shouldn't it? But it doesn't feel right that something good should happen to me. This is what I kept telling myself as I walked home. I got in and rode up into the paragraph about picking Natalie up from the after school program. After that, a knock on the door startled me. Hey. Hey. Josh, how are you? I'm okay. Hmm. A little tired from walking back from your mom's. So, what's up? Not much. What you doing? Not too much. 
Were you writing in your blog? Um, yeah. <laughs> So, when we were at my mom's earlier, we were talking about if, you know, you like me. Yeah, I really, really do. I'm sorry about being so weird earlier. It's all I thought about on my way back here. You're great. You're one of the most awesome people I've ever met. You know me, so you should understand better than anyone that it's just... I'm not really good with words. And... We made out, and then we had sex. It was pretty incredible. I did a lot better than I expected to. I mean, it wasn't perfect, but it's not like it only lasted a minute or anything. It probably lasted around 15 minutes. The most awesome 15 minutes of my life. Well, maybe only eight of them were awesome. The parts where it kept slipping out were kind of nerve-wracking and scary. Seven, actually, because for a minute there I didn't think I was gonna be able to get the condom on. Anyway, it was awesome, is my point. No pun intended. After it was over, we just laid there. She seemed so happy. I tried to fall asleep, but I couldn't stop thinking about finishing this blog entry. So eventually, after a couple restless hours of mentally going back and forth, I got up and did it. And here it is. You're reading it. It'll be interesting to see how things go tomorrow at work with Jason. I'll let you know how it goes tomorrow night. Claire, you want to get some breakfast? Hey, how are you doing this morning? Did you fuck my daughter? You read my blog. I gotta hand it to you, kid. You got balls coming in here after riding that. This is awkward. This is awkward. What do you suppose we should do about that? What, cat got your tongue? Why don't you write me the solution to this particular problem? Huh? Got a pen and paper? Or does it only work if you're typing? I'm sorry? Are you sorry to me for making this uncomfortable? And you think that... The only way to make it better is to say you're sorry? Or are you sorry for writing about fucking my daughter for the entire world to see? The second one. <laughs> the second one. Hey, Jason, you kick his ass. He's gonna do a thing to stop you. I'm, I'm sorry. I don't know what else to do except for admit that I'm sorry and what I did was wrong. I mean, I, I really don't know what else to do. But I guess me working here is probably not a good idea anymore. Yeah, you're fucking fired. So we going then. Oh, and by the way, my name's not Ed, it's Clint. Oh. Hey. It wasn't perfect, but it wasn't like just one minute. The parts where it kept slipping out were kind of nerve-wracking and scary. You didn't think so? Us having sex is just a joke in your blog? I said it was the most incredible thing in my life. Anyway, it was awesome, that's my point. No pun intended. It, it was awesome. You make it sound like it was the fucking Transformers movie. I, I'm sorry, I, I just wrote what happened and what I thought about it. Like, like I do with everything else. I, I don't know what you expected. Oh, I didn't expect to wake up in your bedroom by myself. I tried to wake you up. I asked if you wanted breakfast, which reminds me. Here's your debit card back. You took my card? Well, I didn't have anything to eat for breakfast, and I, I had to eat before work. Why the fuck would you think it's okay to steal my debit card? Steal? You, you've been buying me food anyway, and I said I would pay you back, and besides, I, I figured we were close, but with, you know...
That's really fucked up, Josh. I'm, I'm sorry. Look, can you just please explain to me what's going on here? I don't even know what's going on here right now. I, I'm, I'm sorry. Why are you upset? Well, I don't know. It's, I guess I just thought you were someone you're not. I'm sorry. No, it's okay. It's not your fault. Anything I can do? No. I don't think so. Wait. Why are you off work so early? Your dad fired me. He he read the blog. <sighs> Did Jason... Yeah. Oh my god. I don't know what to do. And maybe I'll work things out with my mom first. Or <laughs> maybe... I don't know. I, I gotta get out of here. I can't stay here at any rate. Okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> Hey, look, I know you're mad at me, and I'm sorry for not being here when you woke up, and I'm, I'm sorry for taking your debit card. I'm sorry for not writing about last night more poetically, if that, that's what you wanted. But I still really care about you. I, I, I know I'm going to sound like a fucking idiot for saying this, but I, I really think I do love you. You don't even know who I am. Starting this earlier than usual tonight for no other reason than I can't think of anything else to do but write. I was fired again today, again because of my blog, and apparently Claire didn't like what I wrote last night either, which I still don't quite understand, but I guess it upsets me because it's weird. This is the first time in a long time that I've let myself get close to someone. Claire really, really seemed to like this blog, which is cool. I just wish I knew what she wanted me to have written. It doesn't really feel right having that entry of knowing the harm that it's done, so... It didn't really feel right having that entry up knowing the harm that it did. So that's why I had to do something that I've never done before. I deleted it. Josh, I, I just thought I'd let you know that I, I deleted my blog entry from last night. Now, I, I know that doesn't make everything better or anything like that, I just, I just thought you'd like to know. So if you could call me back whenever you get this, and if you like talking, that, that would be awesome. Okay, thanks. Bye. Today sucked. You might have noticed that I deleted yesterday's entry. 
That's because it caused a myriad of problems today. It felt weird to delete an entry. I've been making one of these entries every day now for years, so to erase one, it's like... It's like... giving up. I'll call the cops. Please, ma'am. I, I just need to talk to your daughter. Well, call the cops if you want, but I, I need to talk to her. 911, what's your emergency? Fine, I'll, fine, I'll leave. So, I just almost got the cops called on me. It's been possibly the craziest, worst day of my increasingly horrible life. You'll notice that yesterday's blog entry was deleted because it lost me my job, as well as the one person I know who's actually been reading this thing thoroughly every day and enjoying it. I can't tell her that it's deleted. She won't answer my phone calls. I tried to go to her house, but her mom threatened to call the cops on me. I think she'll read this, but I don't know. Maybe she won't. Maybe it doesn't matter. Maybe she already knows I deleted it. She has to know by now, right? It was probably too late. Maybe it just doesn't matter. I don't really know what does matter anymore. I don't really know what does matter anymore. I don't really know what matters anymore. I haven't slept. I deleted yesterday's entry, so you wouldn't know why, and I can't explain it or that would defeat the purpose, so just know that I haven't slept, and my body is very tired. But I'm not. I'm just sick. I paid the bill. Well, actually, sir, the last payment that I have on record for you is for January. It looks like you're a month behind, but if you pay your full balance now, I can have your cable turned right back on. I don't... I, I, I don't have that right now. I can't really do that. Um, but I never got any notices in the mail about anything, about anything being overdue or late or that Oof. you missed a payment. I'm... Well, I'm sorry, Mr. Thompson, but I can't do anything until you pay your full balance. Do you know where I can get my blood tested? Hi. Um, Not one of these swarms, please. Um, this actually isn't an emergency. I, I just need to... This is the emergency room? Emergencies only? Well, we'll see. It, it could be an emergency. I, I need to know where I can get my blood tested. I, I'm, I'm probably just being really, really paranoid, but it's... I don't know. <laughs> you see, 
I, I went to get, I donated plasma, I, went, I was trying to, and they said that my, um, my, uh, SP whatever was abnormal or something, I don't know what that means, but the day after that they closed, and, you know, I'm, I'm just worried that I might have been the one that closed them, and I, I know, I know, it sounds probably ridiculous and silly and just, but, uh, well, the health department offers free STI testing. Okay, um, the health department. STI. I don't think it would be an STI, though, you see, because I've never... Well, it's just... <laughs> I'm probably just being paranoid, I know. But I'm just really worried that they closed... That one of the needles, one of the needles might not have been cleaned exactly, and if it wasn't cleaned, that I caught something from the needle, and that's why they closed. Well, if you're worried that you have HIV, you can go to the health department. They'll test you for free. The health department. Okay, um... Where exactly is the health department? Run, Forrest, run! Hey, you got something to say to me? Who, me? Yeah, you. Did you just fucking flip me off? I don't appreciate getting made fun of. Oh, well, I don't appreciate getting told to go fuck myself. Well, you should go fuck yourself. What the fuck is any of your fucking business? I don't want to run across the road or not. Fuck you. Okay, look, you need to calm the fuck down. I'm not going to calm the fuck down. I'm tired of this shit. I can't even write about it anymore. So you know what? You want to hit me? You want to kick my fucking ass? Go ahead. I would love for you to. Just Fuck you, you fucking ass fuck! <laughs> Don't you walk away from me! Hello? Mr. Thompson? What happened? Well, you were found unconscious outside the health department. Apparently you got beat up. They tell me, though, that nobody saw anything, which is kind of weird. Why is it weird? Well, you were out in public. You know, this day and age, that kind of thing happened, and nobody sees it. Do you remember anything? Not... not really. I... I was going to the health center to get my blood tested. They wouldn't have done anything like that here, would they? What do you mean? Um, checked my blood, done a test. Oh, okay, see, <laughs> I've only had sex once in my life, and I, I used a condom, and, well, I've never done drugs or anything like that, but I, I used to donate plasma. And the last time I went, they, they told me that, that my, um, my SPE was abnormal or something. And then the next day they were closed and there was no warning of it or anything like that. So I, I thought maybe it was because of me that they closed down because... You mean XRG Plasma over on Fifth Avenue? Yeah. Uh, you know, that, that place wasn't busy enough to stay open. They just weren't getting enough donations. Uh, they've been talking about closing it for two or three months now. So I'm fine. Yeah, and you're healthy as a horse. I mean, aside from a few bumps and bruises, you're going to be just fine. Does this mean I don't have to pay a hospital bill? <laughs> no, you're not going to get quite that lucky, but now that you're awake, I'm going to let your friend know so she can take you home. Hey. Hey. I don't understand. Well, I called your phone while you were in the ambulance and somebody from in there answered your phone. Why were you calling? You deleted your whole blog. Yeah, well, it was kind of ruined my life. Your blog is your life. It's not good. Why not? I thought... 
Writing it made you happy. Not really. It makes me not crazy. I don't know if anything really makes me happy anymore. Except for you. Well, writing your blog calms you down, doesn't it? It's a place to vent. Yeah, it's, it's nice, I guess, to think that I'm reaching people or contributing in some small way, even if I can't any other way. But that's bad. You see, it's just, I've been living this stupid, miserable life, and I've been okay with it because I've been writing about it. But guess what? I'm still living this stupid, miserable life. I just have thousands of pages of proof, and that's worse. Oh, well, I don't think about it that way. I mean, I like reading about your stupid, miserable life. It makes me feel better about my own. It's just a shame to throw it all away like that. You didn't think that yesterday? Well, I mean, I didn't expect you to leave me after all that to go crack jokes about us screwing. I hadn't updated my blog yet that day. You don't have to update every day about every little thing. I mean, I still want you to write, but you shouldn't do that because I want you to. You should do that because you want to. That's your problem. You think people haven't told me that before? You think I haven't considered that? It's, it's too complicated to think, oh, is this going to offend somebody? Is this going to hurt someone's feelings? No, I just write everything every day. That's simple. So when it's not simple anymore, you just throw it all away, because that's simple too, right? Pretty much. And that makes you happy? It's worth a shot. Um, were you happy after you did it? No. I, I picked a fight with a guy for yelling the Forrest Gump thing at me. Thanks for taking me home. I need to talk to you about something kind of serious though. Um, after my dad read that blog entry, he got really, really pissed. Yeah? So did my mom. So they kicked me out. Mommy and dad. Uh, I'm sorry. You might not be. Yesterday you didn't want anything to do with me. Well, today I do. I don't know if there's enough room. I don't mind sleeping on the couch. I mean, soon I'll have my own place and you'll have a new job and I can just go back to reading about your life, but until then, maybe we can help each other out. Does this mean... I just want to do this as friends. Oh, really? I knew that. I, I would just want to make sure you thought that too. What's this? That's your blog. This is every entry? Every single one. I mean, I thought it'd be good to have a backup copy in case you know, they were ever lost, like if the website went down or something. You really thought it was worth saving? Well, yeah. Thank you. I think we might need a dolly. Yeah, maybe. Look at your car. Well, it's a really funny story, actually. Welcome to Josh Thompson's blog 2.0. I am an unemployed college dropout, and I'm not exactly sure where I'm going at this moment. But you're going to take this trip with me. Hey, Josh. Sorry to interrupt. you got to see what's on the TV. Okay. Hey, y'all. Jeannie Peraldo here, and I'm coming at you with an exciting new contest. 
first 15 people down here at Peraldo Family Carpets gets to be in my next commercial, and then the one winner who stays on the carpet all day gets a free carpet treatment and a VIP pass to all my next six commercials. I hope I win. You can't win, Henri. You're just a cat. But all you people out there, come over to Peraldo Family Carpets in Portsmouth, Ohio, and join me for great savings and a great contest. This is happening when? About an hour. Uh, I'm kind of in the middle of a blog. Well, can't you do that later? Uh, yeah, let's go. Let's go. Sounds pretty good. Sounds like a deal. 